We have traveled all over East Africa, finding hard-working farmers who are making a good life on their shambas. We want to learn from them, turn their farms into good businesses, and help them increase their profits. Join us and see how our farmers benefit from the experts' advice. And share their experiences as we shape up their shambas. <laughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in El Geomaracot County. We are meeting Abraham and Priscilla. Six months ago we were here and now we've returned to find out how they're doing. Last time we were here, we wanted to find out if the farmers from here have the same stamina, just like the athletes. So Tony, what do you say? We race to the farm? Sure. Okay, ready, steady? <coughs> Tony, come on! I didn't say go! <laughs> Finally! I have defeated Naomi. Tony! Hi, Naomi. Naomi? How did you get here so fast? <laughs> you thought you were clever? I took about a border. Abraham and Priscilla, are you defeated by your shamba just like me? No, no not yet. <laughs> not yet. I've been doing well. Uh -huh. I've been working on seriously in our dairy, uh -huh. in the greenhouse, right. and on the farm. So how is the greenhouse? Not bad. It's uh -huh. doing well. What about you, Priscilla? How have you been? I'm going on very well. Mm -hmm. I've started giving chickens, uh -huh. and I could, I would want an expert to express me well about loans uh -huh. and savings, right. so that I, I may prosper very uh -huh. well. But first, let's start with the greenhouse. Let's go. Three months ago, this greenhouse was empty. Now it's full of tomatoes, and they look great. Peter from Kenya Highland Seed is back to see how Abraham is doing. So Abraham, I can see here, we've got a problem with the soil. The plants are not looking so healthy. For the future crops here, you're going to need to put a lot of manure in here and a lot of green matter. So even your waste from your maize crop, you can start putting it and mixing it into the soil, will help it. <laughs> the other thing I've noticed here when I was going around on my observation was some blossom end rot. Okay, you can see this tomato here. The base of it is, is starting to rot, all right? And this is a cause of a lack of water and a lack of calcium. And what we've got to remember is when we, the plant is taking water up from the soil, it starts at the bottom from the roots and it brings the water all the way up the plant and then down the stem and to the end. So the end end, the most, end point for the water to reach and the calcium is at the end of the tomato. So if we don't give enough water and we don't give enough calcium at this stage, you will end up with the blossom end rot, such as this. Yeah. So Abraham, did you apply calcium? Uh, from my previous uh, spray application, I applied calcium and uh, fruit and flower spray. Which type did you apply? I don't know whether this is the appropriate one to use. Yes, this is very good. Easy grow. It's high in calcium, uh, which is required, as the picture shows, which is required for the fruiting stage. Mm. The other thing you can do is also put another application of CAN on the ground by the plants. Yes. So you're looking at about two grams or the equivalent of a tablespoon full of CAN per plant and apply that with good watering. Mm -hmm. Good. And this one you can apply foliar by spray. Must I follow the 14-day program or I? As you can see with the plants here, yeah. they're growing very fast and we want the fruits to continue to develop. So it's good to apply this on the 14-day program as they recommend. Yeah. To stop blossom end rot, that means the tomato plants need more calcium and water, do a foliar spray with easy grow calcium. And top dress with one spoonful of CAN per plant every 14 days. So Abraham, we've got some excellent plants here, All right. very strong, really growing well, but you need two wires per bed, you've only got the one, and then you need to lift this up much higher, up to the height of your head, and then in, extend these strings to keep the plants off the ground. All right. And also you can see as the, as the wire has sagged here, 
Now you've got this much of the plant above the wire and this will bring you some danger later on as it gets heavier, it will bend and it will break here and then you'll lose that plant. From there, Abraham, we're going to do what we call layering of tomatoes because as the plant gets much higher, we need to actually lay it down so that it's manageable and we can reach the fruits for harvesting. So what we do is the row on your side, we, we lean it towards that way, okay? The row on my side here, we lean it that way. And that way you get a good um, airflow through the plants as well. And also we can then control the stem as it's climbing and getting taller and taller. And that's the reason we need the two wires here. For greenhouse tomatoes, which grow and fruit for eight months, you need to have good support wires, one for each of the two rows on each bed. Lay the tomato plants in one row in the opposite direction to the next row on the same bed. This means that air can move along the bed, and this will stop problems like powdery mildew. Remember, always move the top of the plant to the wire. If the plant is longer than the wire, it will break and you will not get such a good harvest. Another thing to remember is to desucker. That is, to take off the new stems, leaving one main stem per plant. After this tomato, what can I else plant here? With good crop management here, you'll be able to harvest here for the next seven months. That's when you come with the onions. And onions is an excellent rotation. It cleans up and helps to clean up the soil. Uh, it's very good against any nematodes and it helps to protect your soil from any buildup of wilts. Oh, right. And as we know in Kenya, wilt in the soil is one of the biggest problems. Mm. So Abraham, what kind of harvest are you expecting from your crop? So I'm expecting something like seven tons from this small. You should be able to get up to seven tons from here. Wow, that's amazing. Seven tons from one greenhouse. Now that's good business. I wonder if the farmers are getting a good yield from their potatoes too. Margaret from Mayer is checking out the potato field and it looks like she has spotted some problems. Well, Margaret, you've had a look around the potato patch. Yes. yes. So what are your general observations? I observed some brownish patches on the leaves, you can see. This is a deficiency for magnesium. Another observation that I made, you can see premature shading of the leaves. This is due to a phosphorus deficiency. Mm -hmm. You can see the, this crop, the stem is thin. It means there's not enough phosphorus again in your soil. The brown patches are due to magnesium deficiency, but generally the necrotic yellowing of the, of the the leaves is due to lack of nitrogen in your soil. Brown patches on the leaves means you need to add magnesium. If the plants are also yellowing and the leaves dry early, there's not enough nitrogen. If the leaves dry early or have thin stems, this means there's not enough phosphorus. If the soil has a pH of 4.0, that is too low. And when the soil pH is low, even other nutrient elements might be available in the soil, but not available for plant uptake. For example, phosphorus, it gets locked up. Acidic soil is a big problem. Plants can't take phosphorus from acidic soil. Abraham needs to apply lime to fix the acidity, and he should not use DAP, which makes the soil more acidic every season. Which fertilizer have you been using before? 1846. DAP fertilizer. 18460. It's a good fertilizer. However, because it's acidic and the, the soil pH is too low, the phosphorus gets locked up. But if you use the right fertilizer at the right application rate, you are going to increase your production. In fact, potatoes, they, they, they need a lot of potassium for mm -hmm. quality and tuber formation. Use the MER 16822 plus trace elements. That is magnesium oxide and mm -hmm. sulfur for pH correction. So Abraham, how much do you get from one acre? When you start a new shamba, the yield is around 70 to 80, 80 bucks. But when you repeat it again, mm -hmm. the yield comes down from 80, it comes to 50 or 60. Mm -hmm. It has a potential of 140 bucks. How much do you get a bag? 1,600. 
So we want to advise you mm. to increase your produce mm. to over a hundred bags per acre. That's hundred bags times sixteen hundred. Yes. That's hundred and sixty thousand. Yes, one hundred and sixty thousand after three months. months. One hundred and sixty thousand after three months. That's a lot more than the ninety six thousand he's getting now. Definitely, it is worth getting the right fertilizers then. So we've learned about how to manage your greenhouse especially during harvest time. Mm -hmm. And to use the right fertilizer. But what if you want to advance your business further? So, coming up after the break. Ideas for managing your money. And lighting up your farm. Don't forget the chickens. If you'd like to receive all our Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word ALL together with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this shamba, SMS the name of the farmer together with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are back with Abraham and Priscilla, checking on their progress and there's still lots to do. So, no time to waste. So, see you later, Tony. Miriam is a financial expert and she's here to help Abraham and Priscilla decide how to grow their business. Should they use a loan or save up? It is uh, really nice to see a farmer that is doing so well. You know that uh, you are interested in expanding the chicken mm -hmm. business. Have you been able to access any loans? Yes, but in most cases, we use the savings my wife has in a circle. Uh -huh. What common mistakes do farmers make with their savings? First of all, they lose the discipline, so they don't save regularly. They can uh, get uh, sidetracked from their plan and they end up misusing that uh, savings. Don't overstretch yourself. Mm. Save just what you can manage. Yeah. Abraham, let me ask you, have you ever taken a loan? I took a loan once, some time back. Have you paid it back? I paid it well. <laughs> Everything? Yes. All right, good, good. We are safe well here. Done, well done. All right. Done. Yes, before you take a loan, it is important to shop around and see which financial institution you're going to borrow from, mm -hmm. what interest rate they're uh, they going to charge you. Savings is very important in terms of taking a loan. For other financial institutions, you need to have uh, at least done a small business plan to ensure that uh, that business is going to generate enough income to cover the interest rate plus the profit that you require to grow the business, yeah? Because the farm has to grow. So you have to be careful that when you take that loan, you are able to repay the interest and you need to know what is the interest rate that you're yes. going to be charged and then you factor that from the profits that you're going to get and also include an issue of risk because when you're doing a business, there's always a risk. What is a business plan? Let's use the chicken business, for example. Course, yeah. Can you list for us the expenses that you require for the chicken business? Proper planita housing, feeds, vaccinating, a daylight, and the chicks themselves. Okay. Yeah. So those are, those are the expenses that you're going to consider. Yeah. Then you also look at the income side. So what is the income that you expect from that? So you project that income mm. for in the next six months, you're going to sell them and you're going to make some money, isn't it? Of course, yeah. So you look at the, exp the income and then you look at the expenses mm. that you need to, to, to grow this, those chickens for six months. Yeah. And then you net that, you try to see what is the profit that you're going to get. But you don't also forget your time. Yeah, other than the worker, you will also have your own time that you will spend with the chicken. Yes. So you need to factor a small profit for you as well so that you can grow the business. Yeah. 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 You can go to the Ministry of Agriculture mm -hmm. and you can get somebody to help you with the business right. plan. So what problems do you encounter when getting the loan? Is when they ask for securities. Mm -hmm. and that is where our big problem is. We in this area of ours, Majority of us live in the chambers that were our fathers. So to get something like that, it is a problem. Can an individual borrow 
a loan from a bank using something like a milk statement? Or yes, yes. Cash flow of your firm mm. is very, very important. Yes. And again, it is very, very good to keep records because when the financial institution visits your firm, mm. they want to see these statements. Even if your business plan shows that you can pay the loan with the interest and still get a profit, make sure you have other income in case something goes wrong. If you can't repay, you can get into real trouble. Also, if your business plan shows that you will pay the bank more interest than the profit you will get, do not take a loan. It is much better to save so you don't have to take the risks. Priscilla is now very keen to work on her business plan for the chickens. So, Peter from Kenchik is here to help her work out what she needs to build a profitable chicken business. And you've noticed that she already has how many chickens? No, I have about 85 of them. So you'd want more definitely, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so what, what, what would you advise her? Yeah, what advice is a good business uh, of chicken, especially moving towards improved uh, kienyeji. When you come into pro eggs production, you find that kienyeji gives you some few eggs for a short duration. Can brew, which is the best alternative here, will give you more eggs for a longer duration. Okay, so explain to us in the can brew how, how, much it, how better it is and you know, how much it will be better than what she already has. Uh, if, if, if she does can brew, uh, the first thing that she would realize, she would realize her eggs will start be producing at an earlier stage. So okay. compared to the kenya by four and a half months, mm. up to six, yeah. you'll be able to start getting your eggs. Secondly, uh, when you have uh, 100 ken bro, 80 of them will be giving you eggs. And like in the kenya setup, when you find that out of 100, only 30. Uh, this one continue laying through, provided you give it uh, the comfortable environment in terms of nutrition mm -hmm. as well as uh, the surrounding. It will continue giving you eggs uh, continuously for mm -hmm. up to two years. So when you feed them, you are getting, for the same quantity of feed, you are getting more eggs and this translates to more money. What about the meat ones, you know, like the ones, the, 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 the chicken for meat? Yeah, usually when mm. we sell the Ken Chick sells you the Ken Brew, they usually mix both male and female yeah. for two purposes. One, the male will be able to give you the meat aspect, because will not be laying, and then you can dispose of at a better price. And, and how much do you sell one chicken, the uh, Kenyaji, the local ones? 700 to 1,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, purely by the time they are selling the Kenyaji bird, mm -hmm. after quite a long time, mm -hmm. it's almost usually year, yeah. almost mm -hmm. one year. Mm -hmm. uh, it is usually one, one and a half to two kilos. With Ken Brew, you are able to attain this weight within a matter of six to eight weeks. So you'll be able to sell at a better price and faster. And this will translate to more money. So she can sell even like twice a year? She can like sell over year. three times in a year. Oh, three times? Three times in a year. Wow, that's very good. And then you have the male serving the females. So you'll be able to still get the fertilized eggs. So you can be able to sell them for meat as well as now fertilize your females. So, these Kenbrew chickens will be good for Priscilla's business. They will be ready to slaughter earlier than Kenyaji chickens and they lay more eggs so she gets more money faster. Both good things for saving money and for replaying a loan if she takes one to buy the chicks. Priscilla has decided that she wants to use more of her savings from her chickens to buy a solar light because they spend a lot of money on kerosene when they are power cuts. Power we receive from KPLC is not reliable. Sometimes when power is off, but I think it's very expensive. What do you have on offer? It's a solar home system. The good thing with our product, it comes with a panel, a solar panel. So, and it has a, the three bulbs which you can connect, so it will just be like normal electricity. Mm. And I know with electricity, you have like the TV on or the radio on, you'll also get a power, a solar powered radio, mm. and you'll also get a torch. You get a, a battery that will be able to operate all these systems. You also get a two year warranty. So, if anything goes wrong, you do not go to your local mechanic mm. or fundi, you just give us a call. So, what are the benefits of using this system? Uh, there's the health aspect of it. So the first thing is when you're using kerosene, there's the fumes that the kerosene yes. produce. Mm -hmm. With a solar lantern, then you're, you're assured that there's no fumes and also they do not spoil their eyes. You can also charge your phones. Is there another way they can purchase the 
home system without using their savings. All you need is a very minimal deposit to get this. So you purchase this for only 2,500 as down, down payment and we give you a year to pay. You actually pay from your phone. It's mm -hmm. very, very easy. So what you do is you send uh, M-Pesa and what you're going to do is pay to a business number and that is 21550 mm -hmm. and we have the account number that's here for you. So it's very easy for you to know the account number. Once you put this in your house, you will never have to forget or call to find out what your account number is. Mm. So we are just going to make a quick payment of the deposit for this. And the minute you make the, the payment, you get a token. You will put this token into this batch. Oh, great. So we've paid the deposit of 2,500. Yes. Yeah. Then after that, now all you'll be paying is 40 shillings a day. So once you've paid the deposit, the system works for a week. After that, you need to top up 40 shillings a day, which you can pay daily, weekly, or monthly, depending on how much you can send. For a week, you need 280 shillings. For a month, 1,200 shillings. Or you can send 40 shillings a day. Every time you send a payment, you'll get a number to tell the indicator how much you have paid. I know we are going to save a lot. My children will read every day. Well, at the same That's, time, yes. I don't think we expense any more power blackouts. Mm -hmm. So I think the best thing to do now is to install it. But before we do that, let's check out if this radio works. Okay. Well, I'm going to stay right here and listen to the radio while Karis puts up the system. Abraham and Priscilla, well, it's been a long day. I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. As soon as you brought the experts for Kenjik and Unga, yes. I've improved there a lot. Okay. You told our expert that you may have a problem with the market for your tomatoes. So what are you going to do about it? I think I'll be less worried because I, I am a member of Ashamba. Wow. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I receive messages every twice a week mm -hmm. and they are informing, informing me about the pricing in the market and wow. with market to quote. You are both members now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Then our work here is done. Okay, so see you in the next chamber. Are you a farmer like me? <laughs> Do you want to smile all the way to the bank? It's simple. Just get all your answers from iShamba by just SMSing the word join to 21606 and they will call you any day, any time. Shamba Shape Up is also online. Visit us at shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You can also visit Shamba Shape Up's Facebook page where you can enter great competitions and also get involved in great, great discussions. Shamba Shape Up is also on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up.